this is the automation hub. What you're seeing in front of you is my workspace. This is what I have at my availability, but this is a trial version. This is what it came with and you get to build this out. Right now it shows four automations in play. What I also wanna show you is outside of these tabs up top, there's a couple indicators over here. Everything you could possibly wanna know and more is found in the help section. The user guide is extensive. As UiPath is known for, the community of support is incredible and it's quite large. So more than likely, if you don't know the answer, you can quickly contact UiPath and the answer will be provided at your fingertips. At the same time, as part of the automation hub, I'm going to have actions assigned to me. That'll appear here on my checklist. Each day I can click that checklist and see what do I need to review? What do I need to approve? What do I need to contribute towards, whether it be documentation or actual build, or what do I need to push to production or allow the approval? At the same time, Automation Hub sends notifications such as certain resources approaching a different level of contribution and perhaps a reward is needed. And then of course, I can manage my account, view my profile, set my language, or log out. Inside this Automation Hub workspace, I have the ability to see all automations that are here. And let's fast forward a year, as I would scroll down, I would see everything that's been deployed. Everything that's in production, everything that's approved to be developed or moved to production, everything that's awaiting review, as well as who submitted it, who's contributing to it, who has eyes on it, and there's filters. So let's pretend there's a whole big gigantic list with filters. I can zero in. Let's say that I'm head of accounting. I don't really want to know what legal's working on, but I do want to find out exactly what my team is working on. Not only can you get high level, but I'll show you soon after I show the demo uh, that you can configure it to dive even deeper at the category level, the subcategory level, or the application level. You can even show which automation phases your automations are in for approval or for build. You also have the ability to sort the results. Let me go back and unfilter. You can sort the results by most popular phase, recently updated or alphabetical. I'm gonna show you alphabetical because I know my ABCs, it lists them. Then of course, you can dive in to each automation that's been submitted and in process. Inside of each automation, as it's submitted, you'll see an assessment score that determines, is this automatable? And is it a good idea? This one right here, for test and, and, and demonstration purposes, 88 percentile, this one's good, because it's going to generate impact. In the environment, it's 87% suitable, and we're 90% ready to do it, as well as the information that's been collected along the way, such as a description such as the high-level assessments based on algorithms to determine, is this rules-based? What's the input type? What's the quality of input? Is the process stable or will it change over time? And is there documentation allow us to help with this? At the same time, once an automation's been deployed, if you have the right role, you can leave a comment. This comes up when automations are being reviewed. I can submit those comments and it attaches my comments to this overall automation idea or uh, uh, in process. Here is where you can follow it. Here's where you can upvote it. Depending on what you choose, uh, this goes into your personal workspace so others can see what you're following and others can also vote for it saying, you know what, I agree, this is a good idea. The ideas with the most votes rise to the top of the list. So enough telling let me show you. I'm gonna go back to my workspace and let's say that I'm in HR and I've got an idea because every single month or every time I hire someone new in Mexico, I have to determine what would the US dollars in salary be? I have to go to a site in Mexico at a website and determine what's the conversion rate and what's the exact, uh, uh, pay grade and pay band that would be acceptable and then convert that back and forth, back and forth. We found out it takes roughly eight to 15 minutes per resource every single month to run payroll. So I got an idea. Well, I can submit that idea right here. 
So there's two ways to submit an idea. It's based on your enterprise structure. Water, thank you. You can either submit it as an employee-driven idea, which gives you a high-level entry form. Six to seven simple questions. What does it do? How does it work? What do you need from us? And you can submit it, and it goes to a larger pool to gauge the viability based on general scoring. Or if you're center of excellence driven, you have a much higher level of form to fill out. But again, there's nothing there that as a submitter, you wouldn't have the answer to. And sometimes you can skip it. So I'm gonna click COE driven, and I'm gonna show you how we submit this idea. This is the cornerstone of the automation hub. Get the ideas submitted so then we can plan for development. So remember my automation, the salary converter. Uh, salary converter to uh, MX to US. And automation ID, we're gonna call it 000201. For a description, I type in this automation, takes MX salary and converts it to US on demand. Great. Now, I'm in HR, remember? And inside of HR, this is kind of an onboarding function, but it could also be compensation reward, but I'm gonna say onboarding for now. Then you can dive in even more. Sourcing candidates, screening candidates, selecting candidates. Oh no, that's not right. So let me choose a different one. Let me go into compensate and reward employees, benchmark compensation, develop compensation model, manage compensation. That sounds right. Then I can put pain points. Takes too long to go from system to system. Uh, need something more stable to run in batches, etc. And I keep moving forward. Is there negative impact? If I don't have this, what happens? Too many new hires to scale. I become the bottleneck. I know there's examples out there. Then again, let's dive into the details. Typically, the uh, citizen-driven submittal, uh, that's it. You just fill that out. But this is center of excellence. So why are we automating this? I want productivity. I want to do more. What process changes are expected in the next six months? Are there process changes? Will this process change? No. It's always going to be the same website. It's always going to be the same thing that I move through. So minor change expected, we'll say, because what if they change the website? Who knows? Application changes expected in the next six months? No, none. It's always going to be the same apps I use. Then how frequently do I do this? Well, average working days per year. I know that I do this at least three times every single month. It takes me eight to 10 minutes. So tell you what. Let's just put in here, we'll say uh, average working days per year, 252. Working hours a day, I'm just going to do eight. Average employee full cost per year. Uh, HR administration, 45K. Great, got it in there. Now, how frequently? This is used to calculate, we'll call it autonomic horsepower. How many people, how frequently do they do it? How long does it take? So when I do this, I do this monthly and i do this three times across 15 employees 45 times every month it takes me like i mentioned eight to 15 minutes somewhere in the middle we'll say 12 minutes 108 hours per year now how frequently do i get this wrong a lot <laughs> on average i'm probably going to make at least 30 percent mistakes uh, average a rework time uh, I'm going to say it takes me at least four minutes every time I get it wrong, adding 11 hours per year. Now, before, everybody understood time saved. The number of billable uh, hours multiplied by the billable rate equals the potential time saved if we fully automate it. But what about removing human error? What about rework? Uh, we're not going to worry about average work to be reviewed. It's there. You can see that this goes very granular. Number of employees performing the task, me and my assistant. Look at there. Total time needed to perform the work as is, 119 hours per year, and 0.06 FTE cost per year, 
27K. Wow, lots of nice savings for HR. For one simple calculation, process ways of working. How many times are there peaks? Uh, yeah, at month closing. Average number of steps, uh, between 20 to 50 steps on a good day. Number of ways to complete the process? Well, it's completed the same way every time. Now where do I get my data? Percentage of digital data input? Well, I can enter that in 100% of the time, digitally. Zero scan data, don't need to worry about structured because it's always the same. Uh, greater than 80, and I can even list in the applications that we use. I certainly use uh, Excel, but not Japanese. These are just pre-canned uh, answers for applications. And you know what? I know this guy, Brett Frazier. He's the process owner here. He's going to be the one that's going to add more details. I'm simply the HR administrator. Now, I filled out the form. These are my best guesses. I know that once I submit this, it goes into the system. So let's watch what happens. Are you certain you want to submit it? Absolutely. What did I not fill in? Oh, application. All right, let's pick Japanese. There we go. Submit for review. Submit. Here we go. Saving the changes. It's been successfully submitted. And look what I have. Here's exactly what I took to you two earlier. If I mouse over, shows me that it's saving 118 years and it's now in process. So let me go back to my workspace. Let's see what happened. Salary converter, Mexico to US, awaiting review. The submitter was me, but pretend that I had my HR hat on because I'm going to go into this. And I now notice that as the submitter and as the process owner, this is pushing me through operations system support to do the right thing, take the next action. As process owner, I was assigned to it. It's now my job. So this is how ideas get added into Automation Hub. Now let me tell you a little bit about what took place behind the scenes. So we've seen the dashboard. We know this is where everything's cataloged and waiting for action to take place. It's where our stakeholders can go and see what it is. Uh, in the admin console, we have multiple ways to manage the users, the people that are part of the organization and the permissions. Everyone has permissions assigned to them based on the role that they would play and what actions they'd be able to take in any time an idea is submitted. User roles are established to make sure that the right people are capable of doing the right thing and able to do the right thing. Each role is explained as far as what they do so administrators can easily administrate it. You'll notice, member app inventory, Excel Japan, this is where it's entered. You can put in documentation templates for your PDD, SDD, as well as other development specifications right there waiting for you. Remember those six to seven plus 15 plus questions? This is where you can customize them, your high level assessment or your detailed assessment, all fully customizable based on the questions that you need in your organization. Cost setup was not provided. I didn't uh, add that. So you can get very granular. How much does your business analyst run? And you can create kind of burn rates with that. And then again, the components that are already there, already been published, ready to download right here. So if you're that developer and you need a Google G Suite, you quickly download the component and you're off to the races. You can even modify it here, or you can ask who originally created it. Hey, what's this one mean? With the breakdown of everything captured when the idea was submitted and the automation or component went to production. On top of that platform setup, we have Explore. Inside Explore, there's that listing of automations. You can also see the people in your organization. You can see the components, but you can also see your leaderboard. You can see which badges they've earned. You can see the gauge of their maturity within the organization for RPA. You can see what they've built. You can see the points they've earned. It's points. It's a high score. This encourages competition, this encourages drive, and this encourages automation excellence. So the workspace is where I get the work done. 
It shows me my pipeline of everything that I need to do. It shows me the ideas I've submitted and where they are in that process. So if I wasn't the process owner, I could go and say, hey, Brett Frazier, when are you gonna get this reviewed? HR really needs this because end of month's coming. I can see who's collaborating on my ideas. I can see who the people in my neighborhood are. I can see the components that I've used, and I can also see what I'm following. Remember when I clicked the follow button on ideas to Automation Hub? So that's the Automation Hub. That's how you can submit an idea, how it flows through the organization, and how it drives your automation excellence to give streamlined, refined capabilities so you don't have to manage that list of automations. You don't have to guess what needs to be created first, second, and third. You don't have to think, well, would this feel right if we deployed it? Automation Hub clearly points to exactly what should be developed based on the collaborative ethos of your enterprise, submitting the ideas. If I get tired of doing something and it's mundane and consistent, guess what? I can offload that by submitting the ideas. My coworkers can vote for it, promote it up in the ranks because they feel that pain too. And the supervisors can review it, review the scope, approve it. Developers are then queued to begin development and it drives through the life cycle of automation, giving everybody the insight they need. As data becomes information and information becomes knowledge, you push knowledge to become wisdom. Automation Hub grants you that wisdom in real time as you evolve.